Uh, let's start the chapter two, geometric optics and image formation. Uh, in the previous chapter, we talked about uh, image formed by a plane mirror. Okay, let's start the first section, image formed by plane mirror. You only have to look as far as the nearest uh, a uh, bathroom to find an example of an image formed by a mirror. An uh, image in a plane mirror are the same size as the object, are located behind the mirror, and are oriented in the same direction, upward. Uh, the image height is thus the same as the object height. The image is upright. Uh, so this is the uh, notation we're going to use in this chapter. The object distance we use d sub zero, we call it d naught. And uh, the image distance d sub i. So for this setup, d naught is this distance. Is the distance between the object to the mirror. And the di is the distance between the mirror and the image. So pay attention to the notation d naught and di. Notice that the reflected ray appear to be uh, to the observer to come directly from the image behind the mirror. Uh, in reality, this rays come from the point on the mirror where they are reflected. The image behind the mirror is called virtual image because it can't be projected onto a screen. The rays only appear to originate from a common point behind the mirror. So appear, you have another uh, object here behind the mirror, but actually uh, nothing here. So this is a virtual image. If you walk behind the mirror, you can't see the image because the rays do not go there. However, in front of the mirror, the, uh, the rays behave, uh, behave exactly as if they come from behind the mirror. So it's where the virtual image is located. Uh, later in this chapter, we'll discuss real images. A, a real image can be projected onto a screen because the rays physically go through the image. You can certainly uh, see both real and virtual images. The difference is that a virtual image cannot be projected onto a screen, whereas a real image can. So for projector or a camera, we have a real image. Uh, the object distance denoted by d naught is the distance from the mirror to the, ob to the object. Or more generally, from the center of the optical element that creates the image. Uh, similarly, the image distance denoted by di is the distance from the mirror to the image. Uh, if we measure distance from the mirror, then the object and the, and the image are in opposite direction. So for a plane mirror, the object and the image distance should have the opposite sign. So this is a, a valid for the image formed by a plane mirror. d naught equals to negative di. Uh, so we're going to talk a lot, uh, talk, talk a little bit more, more about the science in uh, later this chapter. Uh, spherical mirrors, the image in a plane mirror has the same size as the object. 
is upright and the same distance behind the mirror. Uh, a curved mirror, on the other hand, can form images that may be larger or smaller than the object and may form either in front of the mirror or behind it. Uh, we can define two general types of the spherical mirrors. Uh, if the reflecting surface is the outer side of the surface, the mirror is called convex mirror. If the inside surface is a reflecting surface, it's called concave mirror. Summary is one of the major hallmarks of many optical devices, including mirrors and lens. Uh, the, the symmetry uh, axis of such optical elements is often called the principal axis or optical axis. So let, let's say this is a convex mirror. And this is a, sorry, this is a concave mirror. And this is a convex mirror. And uh, this axis, no matter it is a, it is a, a concave or a, a concave or a convex, this axis is called the principal axis or the optical axis. And this is a very, very important in this chapter. This is called optical axis. Um, the symmetry axis of these uh, devices is called the principal axis. Uh, the optical axis passes through the mirror center of curvature and the mirror's vertex, as shown in the figure, vertex. This is called optical axis or principal ac uh, axis. Uh, again, this is concave mirror. This is convex mirror. Uh, consider really that are parallel to the optical axis of a parabolic mirror. So the incoming ray are parallel to this uh, principal axis. For the parabolic mirror, they're going to uh, be reflected to the same point, which is called focal point. And for the large spherical mirror, uh, they are somehow not coming to the same point, but not far away. And for a small spherical mirror, they pretty much uh, reflect it into the same point. And uh, we define this distance from the focal point to the vertex of this mirror is F. F is called focal length. A parallel ray is reflected from a parabolic mirror cross at a single point called a focal point. And B, this one, parallel rays reflected from a large spherical mirror do not cross at a common point. And C, uh, this one, if a spherical mirror is uh, small compared with its radius of curvature, it better approximates the uh, central part of a parabolic mirror. So parallel rays uh, essentially cross at a common point. And this is very important. The distance along the optical axis from the mirror to the focal point is a focal length f to the mirror. This length is, L, is f, it's called focal length from the focal point to the vertex of the mirror, this point, center of the mirror. Uh, so this is a convex spherical mirror. Then we have some, uh, the incoming ray is parallel to the principal axis. The reflected ray will, will, will be in this direction. And uh, when we draw the opposite direction of this 
reflected light, they're going to come into the same point. And this is the focal point of the convex mirror. And pay attention, this is uh, uh, the opposite direction as the reflected ray. Thus, this distance f is negative. If the focal length is negative for a convex spherical mirror, and the f is positive for a concave spherical mirror, because you have uh, actually an uh, actual ray going to this point. So the important thing here is the direction of the reflected ray. So for the uh, concave mirror, along the direction, we have the focal point. So the, so, so the F is positive. For the uh, convex mirror, the F is, is the opposite extension of the reflected ray. So this uh, F is negative. A uh, ray is reflected by a convex mirror. Incident ray of light parallel to the optical axis are reflected from a convex spherical mirror and seem to uh, coming from a well-defined focal point at a focal distance f on the opposite side of the mirror. The focal point is virtual because no real ray pass through it. It's virtual, thus f is negative. Uh, how does the focal length of a mirror relate to the mirror's radius of curvature? So we're going to use the incident ray parallel to the main axis or the principal axis. And it is reflected this way past the focal point for this concave mirror. And uh, because this, this line is parallel to this line, so we have angle theta equals to this angle. And on the other hand, because this OX is the normal of this curvature, thus from the law of reflection, this angle theta must equals to this angle theta. And with some uh, uh, discussion about the geometry, so R equals to CF plus FP, and the law of reflection tells us these two angles, they are same. And uh, thus, we have CF equals to FX. And uh, with, some, the, with the small angle approximation, sine theta, equals to theta for a small angle, we will have fx equals to fp. Thus, we can rewrite r equals to this and equal to f. And we get the uh, focal length equals to the radius over 2. And in this chapter, we assume that small angle approximation, also called uh, this, and is always valid. And uh, by doing this, all rays are, are the uh, periodical rays, which means that they make a small angle with the optical rays and are at a distance much less than the radius of curvature from the optical axis. And in this case, we have the, this angle a small angle, so sine theta equals to tangent theta equals to theta. And to find the location of an image formed by a spherical mirror, we first use ray tracing, which is the technique of the drawing rays and using the law of ref reflection to determine the reflected rays. Uh, so for this chapter, whenever you are, you, you are doing the quiz or homework or the test, make sure you draw the picture with your uh, with the rulers. 
Uh, combined with some basic geometry, we can use ray tracing to find the focal point, the image location, and other information about how a mirror uh, manipulates light. Uh, this is a concave mirror. So first, we're going to draw the principal axis. This is this line, and the OP is the object. And uh, we have uh, four very important light coming out from the top of the object. First one is the light parallel to the main axis. And like we discussed, this light will be reflected in the way thus this will pass through the focal point F. So we figure out uh, the reflected light for ray 1. And the second ray is pa uh, uh, the light past the focal point. And uh, the, uh, the light passing the focal point will be reflected parallel to the main axis. So this light number two will be reflected in this direction, parallel to the principal axis. And number three, uh, the light passing the center of the curvature and it will be reflected all the way back. And uh, the last one, uh, the ray number four, is going uh, pointing to the center of the mirror, and it will be reflected in with the same direction to the principal uh, uh, angle, uh, to to the principal axis, the same angle. So this is uh, number four, and again by looking for the intersection of those reef lighted ray, we can find the image of the point Q at, at this point. Uh, for, uh, for, for a more convenient way is you only actually you only need uh, two <coughs> reef lighted ray to, to decide the location of this point. So I will use number one and the number four. So because number one is very easy to find the reflected ray passing the focal point. And the number four, you just draw the, the, the symmetry to the principal axis. And the intersection of these two reflected ray gives you the position of the image of Q is Q prime right here, and then thus P P prime is here. Uh, by doing this, you can find the location of the image. And uh, pay attention, this image is smaller than the object, and also the position of the image is outside the focal length. And this image is inverted. And uh, I got a question, this image is a real image or a virtual image? So it must be real image because the the point Q prime is formed by the real light. We are uh, this cross point. We are following the direction of the reflected ray. And then let's look at the the second one. The the image formed by the uh, convex mirror. So again, our object OP. The first uh, 
the first light ray coming from the top of the object and parallel to the principal axis. And uh, like we discussed earlier, this will be relighted this way. Looks like it uh, coming out from the focal point. So this is the focal point F on the other side of the mirror. So this is the reflected ray one. And uh, so ray two, it goes to the center of the mirror. And similarly, it will be relighted in this way, same angle. And uh, number three is, is uh, pointing to the center of the curvature and this will be reflected all the way back. And then, and uh, number two is uh, pointing to the focal point, and it will be reflected parallel to the uh, principal axis. And uh, to find the, uh, where all this reflected ray cross, we must draw the line in the opposite direction of this. And we figure out it's, in, it's at this point, Q prime. And uh, so this image is a real image or virtual image. So it must be virtual image because there's no real light coming out from this point. And uh, uh, we find this point by uh, drawing the line in the opposite direction of the reflected ray. Okay, so this is how we're gonna use the properties of this of these uh, mirrors to figure out the position and the uh, and the orientation of the image. Uh, so these are some discussion about the ray tracing rule. So summary of the ray tracing rules: a ray traveling parallel to the uh, optical axis uh, is reflected along the line that goes through the focal point. And uh, a ray traveling along a line that goes through the focal point is reflected along a line parallel to the uh, principal axis. A ray traveling along a line that goes through the center of the curvature of the mirror is reflected back along the same line. A ray that strikes the vertex of a spherical mirror is reflected symmetrically above the optical axis of the mirror. Uh, the mirror equation. So here we're going to uh, find the location and the magnification of the image by using some, uh, some ge uh, geometry. So this is the object with the original height H0 and the distance is D0. Remember our definition, the D0 is the distance between the object and the mirror. And this is the image. Di is the distance between the image and the mirror. This is the C is the center of the, the the whole circle. And this angle is theta. This angle is theta prime. And Hi is the height of the image. And R is this distance. So with this set up, uh, we have uh, phi and the phi prime, there are alternate uh, 
uh, interior angles. So phi equals to 90 of phi prime. So this angle is phi prime. Uh, tangent theta, tangent theta prime. You can figure out this in this picture. Tangent theta, tangent theta prime, and uh, tangent phi and tangent phi prime. So tangent phi and uh, tangent phi prime. This or this. Uh, and we have these formulas. And then we combine this together. We have 1 over d naught plus 1 over di equals 2 over r. And uh, we notice that the big r equals 2 times the focal length. So we have this formula. 1 over d naught plus 1 over di equals 1 over f. And again, d naught is the distance between the real object to the mirror. Di is the distance between the image and the mirror. And f is the focal length. And this is very, very important. It's called mirror equation. And also we define the image magnification. So h i over h naught equals to negative d i over d naught. Let me arrange this down. So one over d naught plus one over d i equals one over f. And we also have h i over h naught equals to negative d i over d naught equals to m. Again, m is called magnification. And uh, if M is positive, the image is upright. And if M is negative, the image is inverted. Uh, and if M is more than one, the image is larger, and uh, vice versa. With, with this definition of magnification, we get the following relation, a relation between the virtual and the horizontal object and the image distance. So this is uh, something you need to be very careful. Uh, and it's very, very useful for us to solve the problems. So we start from the first one, d naught. d naught is the distance between the uh, object and the mirror. It's always positive. And the di, is defined to be the distance between the image and the mirror. And if di is positive, means the image is real. And di is negative, the image is virtual. And h0 is the, uh, the height of the object. Uh, so H0 is positive for upward and uh, negative for downward. And uh, HI is same, upward for positive and uh, downward for negative. And the very important thing to pay attention is F, the focal length. Uh, for the converging, uh, converging lens, so here is uh, for the converging lens or converging mirrors uh, is a positive and diverging mirror is negative. Uh, so here is something I want talk, I wanted to talk about. Converging and diverging. So let's go back to the these pictures. So this is a concave mirror. This is a converging or a diverging. So it's a converging. And uh, the, the uh, convex mirror is a diverging mirror. So the important thing is you figure out this thing is diverging or converging, okay? Uh, again, 
the uh, diverging mirror is convex mirror, and the converging mirror is a concave mirror. So be very careful. Let's come back to, to this page. The focal uh, the focal length f for the converging mirror is positive, for the diverging mirror is negative. And this m is our uh, magnification. And when m is positive, means the image is upright and vice versa, negative for inverted. Uh, let's look at an example. If the light source is 12 cm from the uh, corner and uh, the image magnification is 0 0.032, what is the radius of the curvature of this? So for this one, we have, so the, the light source is uh, the, like the real object and the corner is, is acting as the mirror. So that, that means 12 centimeter is the d naught. And uh, m is uh, this number. And uh, so we're going to always use these two formulas to figure out whatever we, we want. So, so the question tells us uh, uh, the d naught is 12, so we have d naught here. And it also tells us the m is this. So with the d naught and m, we can find di with this equation. And from, and from here, we have d naught and di, we plug into this equation. We can solve for the f. And from here, we know that the, uh, the radius is always double the focal length. So we can solve for the radius. And this is the solution given by the book. Uh, this is some problem solving strategy if you want to read it. Uh, next section, image is formed by refraction. Uh, if you look at a straight rod uh, partially uh, submerged in water, it appears to bend at the surface. Uh, the reason behind the, uh, the curious effect is that the image of the rod inside the water forms a little closer to the surface than the actual position of the rod. So it, do it does not line up with the part of the rod that is above water. The same phenomenon explains why a fish in water appears to be closer to the surface than it actually is. So bending of the rod at water, uh, water-air interf uh, interface, uh, point P on the rod appears to be point Q. And uh, we consider a simple system consisting of two mediums separated by a plane uh, boundary. The object is one is in one medium and the observer is in the other. So the observer is here and the object, and the object is in the water. Uh, for, uh, for, for instance, when you look at a fish from above the water surface, the fish in a medium one the water with index 1.33 and your, your eye in the medium two. So here we always take the, the air in that is one, it's same as the vacuum. And the surface of the water is the boundary. And uh, the depth you see in the image of height hi is called apparent depth. The actual depth of the fish is the, is the object height h naught. So h naught, this OP is actual height, and hi is the apparent depth. And uh, for a view from above, it's called a normal view, we can approximate the refraction angle C to be, to be small and, uh, the, and replace sin theta in Snell's law by theta. Thus, we can use the triangle this one and this one.
by looking for the tangent of theta, we have uh, this h i equals to n two over n n one times h naught. And so this is the relationship between the actual depth and the apparent depth. Uh, let's take a break.